In this video I'm going to be cleaning up the barrel piece uh, that we were doing in the last video. Now I looked up online and found a really good reference video on YouTube that shows me a lot more detail. It's amazing what happens when you can actually look at an object spinning. There's a lot of things in here that I overlooked and just uh, or just plain got wrong. Uh, there's a little bevel here. I didn't include that so I'll go ahead and include that bevel. Um, the way the the hinge works is actually quite different than what I thought. I thought maybe it was split in the middle and it was half and half, but it looks like it is actually perfectly symmetrical with um, part of the hinge being in the middle, so I'll go back and fix that. And then uh, back here, this is actually an open spot. And then the way the clasp works uh, is shown in this video as well, which is great. So right here, um, this shows me a really good view of the clasp, so I'll come back and, uh, and work on that as well. Alright, so first thing is uh, I guess I'll go ahead and add that bevel that I just noticed. So it looked like it went up something like that. Just go ahead and add that bevel. Just sort of a mitered edge like that is probably going to look just fine. Um, I'll just clean up this point here. Just sort of play with it to what feels like a better uh, approximation of a curve. Now this guy here I don't want to be out sort of hanging, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, terminate that guy in there and merge him. And then uh, we'll go ahead and harden those edges there. That should look pretty good. Let me see what that looks like. I think I pushed it in a little bit too far once I moved that other vert up. So let me just something like that, just give a little bit of a curve to it. Okay, looks pretty good. That edge right there, I'd want to be a softened edge. There we go. Okay, that part looks fine. Uh, go ahead and take a look at uh, what's going on in here. So, it's not completely wasted work. Um, I can still reuse uh, a good piece of this thing. So, um, I think what I'm going to do though instead, just in case there's any variation back here, is I'm going to go ahead and pull this piece off and, and fix it as its own little chunk. So I'm going to go ahead and do the interactive split, just that point to that point. Uh, same on the other side here. And then I'll just grab all of this stuff and extract that this piece could come or not, it doesn't really matter. I'll go ahead and extract that. So now that is its own piece and what I'll do with this is just fix it up on this side and then mirror that over. So this isn't all completely wasted work. I do need um, this piece in the middle anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and delete out these faces. That's going to be my new middle. And then take a look at what this is looking like. Just shift I for isolate select there. And I'll just move this over this way to sort of give this thing a lot more space. And then I'll move that down to center. Just hold X, snap that to center. Looks like there's some something getting connected up on the outside there that I didn't anticipate. Go ahead and get rid of those guys. So I just want that um, inside loop there. Okay. And just X to snap to grid. Okay, so that looks pretty good and then shift I with nothing selected to bring everything back. Okay, so this piece is going to be connected to this piece around here. It may be slightly off right now, but it's pretty close. So we'll go ahead and snap that um, basically onto one of these verts. Good, there's a very small gap there. That's what I'd want. Go ahead and get rid of that face. This guy here will get snapped also to center, so just X. Okay, so that actually looks like it's going to end up being a little thin, but this, this is something that can be cleaned up um, in the end if, if necessary. Um, okay, so this piece is actually probably fun. Let me just take a look at this. This piece is probably fine. Um, that's basically what that needs to look like. Now this piece needs to go into this piece a little bit more effectively. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what we got going on here. 
Okay, so this one's a little bit tougher. Basically what I'm going to need to do is add a new edge loop through here. And probably it's going to be easiest to go and do that with the um, interactive split tool. Um, so I'll just grab that guy. And I'll just reposition these again. I'll just sort of sloppily add that. And snap that down to one of those points there. And then get rid of that span of faces. And this span of faces. And that's just a shift double click on the second face to do that. And then I'm just going to go ahead and basically put these two guys together with a pen. So to do that, I need to go ahead and combine them into one object. This one does need to maintain this offset because this this spacing here is for um, the the hinge piece of the other piece that we don't see right now. I'm just turn that back on. So I don't want to crush that in. So what I want to do is make sure that I do an append here, and then pretty much all the rest of them. Um, these will just snap out, and I'll have to do a little bit of a triangle right there at the end. Okay, so I'm just go ahead and do some appending. I also want to make sure that I have those things. They look like they're pretty well snapped um, there, so looks pretty good. Okay, and now at this point. I could do a bridge or something like that, but you don't want to have a bunch of extra polys in here sort of unnecessarily. So the way to do it is just go ahead and snap all these into place. And you can just sort of turn on uh, snap to vert permanently up there in the interface. There used to be a shortcut that I did for that, but it doesn't seem to work anymore. Okay, uh, so I'll go ahead and, and merge those. Okay, it looks like I just lost my whole <laughs> material somehow. I just shift I there. Okay, so there's my object still there. So let's see if uh, just assigning a Lambert back. Quirky, totally quirky. Who knows? Some of these things you just have to live with. All right, so let me go ahead and do an append here. And I'm a little clumsy with the menus here because I'm trying to demonstrate this without using. Um, some custom hotkeys. So I have custom hotkeys in hot menu in uh, marking menus that I tend to use, but uh, I wanted to demonstrate this using the default Maya setup. Okay, so basically the gap looks correct all the way around. We don't have a ton of extra poly, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I also noticed in this little video bit here that there's a little bit of an indentation right there. So it just looks like it cuts in. I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what purpose that would have, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, I don't know if that's supposed to go all the way around to here or something. I, I don't know what it's supposed to look like. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it on these and we'll see how that works. Uh, turn my snap to vert off. Let's see what that gets us there. Okay, I think that'll be fine. Basically, it's just cleanup time now. Go through here and delete all these extra faces. This other one we'll have to delete, I think, the whole side face and then redo it based on the new border edge. So as these get deleted, they should leave us a new inset border edge like that. And then just double click that guy and then fill that hole. So the thing's starting to look a little saw blade kind of funky, but it should be right um, when everything else is on here. Okay, that's looking good. I do want to make sure that I didn't accidentally offset that face. That's something that could have happened, so let me just check that from the front. Um, totally linear, so looking good. Okay, so let me just get out here. Okay, so that, that part is looking good. I think we got the hinge uh, squared up. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of cleanup around here. Uh, these pieces where this is going to mirror, um, these edges basically don't need to be here. Um, so this is just a little preemptive cleanup. So I'll just delete those edges. Um, same thing I'm going to do up here. Delete those. Take a look at this thing from the side. There was a 
a little extra bit right here. Okay, this little guy, so let's go ahead and add that in. Obviously just going to be a cylinder. Down X, 12, might be a little too high, but we'll see. And we don't need any subdivisions on the cap at all. Okay, so we'll go ahead and just turn off those cap divisions. See where we are there. Okay, so just move it something like this and then scale it and get rid of those, uh, what will be interior faces in the end. So maybe it stands out, um, something like that. This sort of artifact, I mean this sort of object, you won't even really be able to see it like this, but once this thing has some occlusion done on it, um, that'll add a lot of extra detail that that's actually uh, geometry there. So you'll be able to see it in a profile and stuff like that. Alright, so go ahead and soften harden that piece. That looks good. And at some point we'll come back and just start um, combining all these pieces together so that we have uh, one piece to mirror in the end. Uh, okay, as I recall, I left that a little bit ugly. Yeah, this may be pretty close, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, just move this around just a little bit just to look like this image just a little bit more. That, there may be a little bit of perspective skew to this, but um, probably not that much. Okay, and that loop right there is not doing anything, not helping our form at all. Uh, so go ahead and get rid of that. Basically that's a, something you should do whenever you're doing low poly modeling is just double check if, if something's not modifying the form then just get rid of it. Uh, and we're going to get into quite a lot of that um, back here actually. Okay, so from what I saw in this, of this clasp area, so first there, there, there's the hole so I need to go ahead and add that hole in see this thing from the side, get a sense of where that hole is. So I suspect hole start, hole end, right, just like that. So um, I could do that with a boolean or I could just go ahead and um, leave myself the span. So to do that I'll just grab just the face there and do an extrude. Uh, looks like it should be right around there. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, press G to extrude again and pull that very close to that, but not quite touch that. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now this could be done uh, a number of ways here. Um, basically, I, again, I could knock that out with a Boolean, but just to give you another option, I'll go ahead and do this with the Insert Edge Loop tool. So I'll just drop a couple of edge loops here, grab this face here and then just move it across to wherever it's supposed to be. I guess it's probably supposed to be roughly in line with um, that site right there, so I'll just go ahead and do that. And then basically that, let me just get rid of all these edge loops except for the edge that we care about, and I'll just leave everything else as a big ugly end gone. Whoops, the wrong button press there. Okay, so I did the control button instead of the shift button, all sorts of different contextual marking menus in Maya. Okay, so there I have that hole cut out now. And now I'll need to see what else I gotta do back here. I think uh, it looked like the, the clasp part came out around here, and it actually had the site si sitting on top of it. I'm not gonna do the site in, uh, in this video, I'll come back and do another video for the sites, um, but that clasp is something I would like to go ahead and do. That's part of this thing that I want to mirror. Okay. Okay. So the quirky things about this—it's not that quirky, but things you have to be aware of here are: this thing doesn't have very much thickness. See, if this was thick all the way across like this, um, then you wouldn't be able to see that hole right there. So this is obviously just a very thin piece of metal that comes over this and it looks like there's a little bit of a gap that just gets moved into place that allows this to, to flip up. So uh, that's going to take uh, just a minute to, to, to take care of there. So it also looks like um, this piece comes out, rounds out, and basically forms this basically same shape as the 
this little beveled piece that we already have and then there's another piece that comes over and clicks on top as like a stopper or something um, so I'll go ahead and and create that again this is going to be a lot of the same tools over and over and over again here so same process over and over and over again so hopefully this is making sense and um, you see that you actually don't need every tool that Maya has. Maya has a ton of extra tools that uh, don't get a, that much use, at least out of me. So go ahead and extrude that. Maybe something like that. That'll just be our um, stopper piece and the site can go on top of this. I'll just give that a little bit of a angle there. Okay, which means the little piece that comes in here is something I want to deal with. Okay, so this piece is going to be um, a little bit more work. I'm going to go ahead and do another um, interactive split and I'll just go across these guys and then snap that in line with that vert there. Just see what, what that does. Okay, and then I'll just pull that in just a little bit. I'm just trying to give myself a little bit of a gap around all these things so they don't fit perfectly because, you know, things just always have to have a little bit of extra room for the wigglage. Um, okay, so that's probably fine uh, there. I'm not sure if this piece here is supposed to be coming down um, also. Looks like maybe it is. Uh, so let me go ahead and just extend that split that I just did. Um, interactive split. Uh, well, oh, it's under split, that's right. Okay, so I have that set up to a hotkey, and so where things live is sometimes not immediate for me. Sorry about that. Okay, so basically what I'll do is I'll extrude this out now. And that's going to create a little bit of a weirdness here. So let me think about that for a second. I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to leave I don't want to make a a hole here um where there's two faces immediately facing each other especially because they don't move separately. So I, it looks like what I'm going to need to do is I'll probably just delete this face out, extrude this face and just go ahead and snap in line there and then just go ahead and merge those. I should have done that a slightly different order, but I just didn't see how that actually needed to look. Go ahead and merge those. That should be looking good. Um, okay, let me see what's happening in here. Not ideal. I don't know what's going on with that. Uh, that I'll come back and fix that, I guess. I'm not entirely sure um, why that that edge hasn't worked out. Maybe this is a, I see, I think this is actually an interior face now. No, it's not. Let me just see if that happens to be an interior face. Now this is getting a little messy, uh, so I'm just going to isolate select here. Um, okay, so there was an interior face there, and those can cause a lot of problems, so good to go ahead and just get that out of the way. That guy's fine. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and, and uh, pen that guy back into place here. Okay. And I, I will come back and sort of clean up a lot of this junk. I have a lot of extra geometry that's um, not, not needed. It's just sort of construction geometry. And I'll go ahead and bring back everything else. Just shift I again. And we'll go ahead and extrude this guy now. Okay, so we'll just match that bevel that already exists. And I'm just going to hand line those up. Um, so just the easiest from the side here. Bevel that. Uh, looks like I need another segment. And then like I say, I'm just going to go ahead and snap align these by hand. I cannot use the center manipulator. Again, that will uh, snap in all, all dimensions and end up sort of giving me uh, a little bit of a screw over. Um, this guy, actually I would have been fine with the one, 
that's probably fine. Let me just see what that's actually going to look like. That's fine. So there'd be a subtle variation there in shape, which I think is actually fine. Um, so let's take a look at that. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a huge merge on this, see what we lose. So we lost a few. And again, I keep a very low tolerance on my merge, so I don't accidentally merge stuff um, I didn't anticipate. OK, so I'll take a look at what this piece is looking like now. This is the part here that needs to have the clasp in it. Um, so let me go ahead and add that. Let's see where exactly that's going to fall in. Looks like right along that, that line there. So I'm going to go ahead and add that in. And one thing you might want to do if you have Isolate Select turned on is just go under Isolate Select and turn on Auto Load New Objects. And that way, whenever you create something, you don't have to go add it to the Isolate Selection. OK, so it looks good. 12. Going to be a little on the huge side. I think maybe I'll take that thing down to 10 or so. Okay. Okay, so maybe something like that. It's pretty close. I can't tell. It did look like it had a little bit of a flare to it um, when I saw it opened. I can't exactly tell what that shape is. I think it's it's something close to. A, to what I'm doing here. Uh, probably not exact, but something probably pretty close. So uh, what I want to do is just go ahead and pull these guys down, make sure that all goes through. And then uh, I can go ahead and get rid of these. I don't think those are actually going to help. Just end up messing up my topology a little bit. OK, just go all the way through. And then just Boolean that out. And also, with um, Isolate Select turned on, if you do a Boolean or any operation that creates a new piece of geometry and you don't have auto load new objects turned on, all your stuff will disappear. So don't think, oftentimes that can feel like the bevel, ha I mean, the, the Boolean hasn't worked, but a lot of times that's not the case and you just need to turn uh, auto load new objects on. All right, so I'll go ahead and merge those. And then this is all the inside faces, so I don't, I don't need these. Go ahead and get rid of these. In fact, all this stuff needs to go. Like that. Some edge details. Okay, so this is the part that I was talking about before, if that didn't actually make sense. See, this is close to what I need to make as a final form, but it has a very thick edge here. And if you look at this here, see how you can see that hole through? If that was connecting across here, you wouldn't be able to see that hole through there. So that means this is all very thin. And uh, that's kind of a nitpicky detail, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, add that. So to do that, I'll have to get rid of all the thickness that is there. back is probably fine but um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and let me just show you what happens I'm, I'm gonna need to extract this but I'll show you what happens to this okay actually I don't won't need that guy yeah I think I will okay so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and just do an extrude and pull that in and see how it it sort of um, moves the face and leaves an one edge there. Uh, even if you use the, the thickness here, and I drive that, uh, you can see that I'm not getting like a full solid form. And what I want here is a full solid form. So I'm not going to be able to do an extrude um, based on a face selection. Basically what I need to do here is extract that. And it works differently when you work at the object level. So if I grab this, and say extrude and pull it. Now it'll actually have a volume, even though the my volume's inside out, but it still has the volume. Okay, so what I actually want to do though, instead of pulling this, and you can actually see the there's a big difference between how these things work, so it's a good thing to show too. So see how I pull this in based on the normal, 
there's this variation like it doesn't pull a straight line here uh, basically everything will be off just a bit if I do it based on the normal but if I do it based on thickness down here and I'm just going to use control because I just need a very small amount see how nice and even that comes out so that's what I want something more like that looks like something is uh, something's gone awry here I'm not exactly sure what that face is doing let me see maybe I just pulled it just a bit too far and intersected itself um, so let me just see if I can go up just a tiny bit higher so that there it is right there it's just sort of going through itself um, so I'll, I'll keep that thickness down to just before that happens somewhere like that looks fine anyways okay so we'll go ahead and uh, reverse those normals little bits little bits of stuff that I'm gonna have to go back and clean up but not not awful so I'm gonna get rid of all of the stuff um, that's hitting its center let's see don't think I'm gonna end up needing at least that back one I don't think I'll need that and this one I may not need either um, definitely won't need that. In fact, let me just go ahead and isolate select this again. And these faces in here, these are going to end up getting merged a bit. This guy here was meant to come down, be in line with that face, like that. Okay, just a little bit of crossover happening here, so I'm just going to manually take care of that okay uh, the rest of these are looking pretty good I'm just gonna go ahead and grab these guys and snap them in line with whatever's happening back here in terms of on why because there was a little bit of variation happening okay now I can't remember what my other piece looked like so I'm just gonna bring that back temporarily Okay, so that meets there. This is all going to end up being an inside face. Okay, everything meets well except back here. I got I have a little bit of a problem because obviously I don't want this thing to be open like this. So um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and do an append to poly on this guy. so maybe what I'll do is I think I, I did delete this one and I probably shouldn't have so I'm gonna go ahead and just extrude this snap that up to there and then merge those and then append a poly one more time right here and that should sort of solid make me a, a nice solid volume okay like that Okay, so now I have a full volume, everything lines up um, border edge to border edge now. That looks good. So I should be able to combine those, do a merge. Again, keep a very low tolerance on your merge threshold. Um, all those border edges should have gone away. They have. So that is looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do a soften harden on this whole thing. And now I'll start going through and uh, doing a little bit of cleanup on this. So try to find all of the places where the form is not being changed by an edge, like that. And again, I'm okay with with leaving end gons on this. Um, I do need that uh, that one particular edge right there, but the rest of that doesn't need to be there. And these are just going to turn into bigger end gons. This is totally fine with me. This was going to triangulate just fine. Um, it, this is an indication that this one edge has just a harder an angle than its um, its neighbors. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down just a little bit and see if that just tiny amount. So just that tiny move was enough to bring that in line so that it would smooth across that. Okay, so that is looking pretty good. 
not that much more junk on this thing that looks like it has to be cleaned up. So I'm going to go ahead and combine here. And I'm not even I'm not going to do anything to put those together. I'm just going to combine them into one object. I'm not going to like tie it in top topology wise or anything. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and mirror this. And there are a couple important things to know when you do a mirror. So I'm going to go ahead and do it and try to show you. I'm sure that something will mess up. Okay, a positive x. Okay, well, more or less, okay, here's a, yeah, more or less worked well, but here's one. See how this got pinched to a point right through here? Uh, this is something, again, I think I've mentioned this in another video, but when you do a mirror, your merge threshold is not something you can change in the tool settings. You have to do it in history. So if I set it like that, that should fix it. But notice that it actually doesn't all sit together. So this is why it has sort of a high tolerance to begin with. So when you see this, typically, uh, at least for me anyways, I'd rather just back up. So I'd rather back up and make my mirror work properly. The easiest way is just go to the front view, um, select a border edge, and then take a look at what's going on. Uh, so that's all my middle stuff. Let me see, get this guy back here too. And again, go back to the front. And I suspect that there's just a little little nubbin. There it is right there. Who is that? I'm going to see if I can find uh, who the offender is. And if it is, it might just be a, a vert that's slight, like that's just very slightly bowed out, it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead, back to the front, and just snap align that again to X. So just now everything's completely flat. Um, the two tool settings that you need to double check are you're on world mode and then you have retain component spacing turned off. If you're on object mode, it basically means always retain component spacing. I'm not sure why that's the case, but that's the way it works with Maya. So you have to make be on world and retain component spacing off and then everything will snap align just perfectly. Okay, so this should be all set now. I'll go ahead and go back to the mirror geometry. It should be right. Okay, look like that worked well. Again, we have the one little glitch right in there, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to clean that up. Looks like Maya's uh, starting to struggle under the amount of history that I've created on this object, so I'm going to go ahead and clear that history as soon as I do this. Okay, so notice now that pops out, everything works. So a very low threshold like that is a, is a good idea so that you don't accidentally merge stuff that you didn't uh, didn't plan to. Okay, uh, so that looks good. I'm going to go ahead, like I said, and um, delete the history on this. And I'm just going to delete all the history. It's fine. Um, I don't think I need history on any of the other objects right now either. Um, and I'll just double click that edge loop. This is only a, a modeling seam. You wouldn't want to leave this in the final object. It's serving no purpose, basically. Um, so I'll go ahead and delete that edge. Should be no change to the shape. I need to do that same thing back here. Okay, and I do have holes, just so this is clear, like this is, Maya considers this to be a hole, this face right here. Um, and again, uh, I did mention this in another video, but the reason you have to be concerned about this is when this gets triangulated by some other source, some other engine, then what it may do is connect this vert to this vert and, and just sort of draw a triangle directly over where there's a hole. So, But Maya will always do that pretty faithfully, so as long as you're going to um, triangulate in export or, um, or something like that, it, you should be fine with leaving holes and faces. So that's why I'm not that concerned about that guy. Okay, so this is looking good. Uh, I think basically the last thing I really need to do is drop the barrel itself in. So let me go back to the front view here. Create a cylinder. Uh, let me just go ahead and do that with the creation parameter so I don't have to move that all over the place. And I think I did 12. I think it was 12 for the actual bullet area. So I think that's probably going to work fine here as well. And I'll just line this up. Even though I have a reference image here, what I have is in the cylinder behind it right there. This is my actual bullet hole. So I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, use 
that to a line. So an easy way to do that would be to just snap that up and then scale it down to where it matches. Maybe just slightly smaller, maybe slightly bigger, maybe exact. I, I don't really know um, how that would work in a real gun. Just scale that um, way on up. Okay, and I keep getting this non-object space scale baked into components. Basically, that just means um, it's not going to do this non-proportional scale um, based on this because it's set to world. If I set this to object, then that'll just be retained in the object itself. Um, it sort of doesn't matter to me either way. So, um, Okay, so what I want to do here is just make sure that this goes all the way through so I can see all the way back to my cylinder. And that should be fine. Just grab those two, difference that out, and double check the, what this uh, looks like on the on the back side here. Whoops, looks like I accidentally created a camera there. Okay, um, okay, looks good. I'm I'm pleased with that. I could actually even turn those facets into a little bit of rifling if I just uh, was able to swing that around enough. But um, I think this is probably going to be fine just softened out like that. Uh, oh, there you can see there are some artifacts happening here. Um, see the the dark and light adjacent like this? Basically what you need to do here is you want to snap these guys out to some other um, one of these other spans that's uh, part of the barrel. It doesn't even matter really which one so long as you just snap it and then merge it. it should work fine. I could just get rid of these edges altogether, actually, um, but this will this will work fine just to go ahead and do this. See, I'm still super slow and very clumsy with this mouse. Hopefully, that'll go away soon. Okay, so go ahead and merge uh, those. So 28 went to 21. Oh, looks like I missed one over here. Okay. Okay, so that should have cleaned up all that inner weirdness that was happening. So that shading is looking good. Uh, the back is fine uh, because it's just a hole. Again, this is a hole which would create a problem, but it, it shouldn't actually given what we have. All right, so that's looking pretty good. This centerpiece actually turned out to be very close to, I think, what it's supposed to look like. Um, and then this piece here just needs to get mirrored, and I'll do the same thing that I did on the other one, just double check from the front. I've got going on there. Looks like they're pr pretty close to all in line, but I'll double check that with the uh, edge loop selection. Okay, so just make sure you have that inside border edge. And there does seem to be a little bit of variation. I'm not sure if that's just a display issue or what, but I'll go ahead and snap that. Okay. Go ahead and mirror that. Whoops. And then basically every time I do a mirror, I'll come back through here and uh, set that to a very low tolerance just to be double sure that everything's cool. And then grab those two pieces, combine them, and just do a, a big old merge on that. Okay, didn't clean up everything, so that means I have some other issue in here. Oh, of course, um, this thing has a center line, and the rest of the the rest of the that piece does not. So, just not paying attention there. Go ahead and delete those out. And sometimes you'll find uh, this sort of thing will happen. Um, if I did this in a different order, everything would have been fine. But um, at this point, I think what I'm going to need to do is just go ahead and sometimes you, you need to do this kind of thing where you just delete a face and then append it back in. I'm not exactly sure why this is the case, but. Um, a lot of times that'll just fix those border edge issues as you can see there. Um, so that border edge is totally gone. So that same thing will work on this face as well. So just kill that face, append a poly, and then it's good. OK, 
Okay, should be able to soften harden that. Okay, so that's looking good. Um, I'll need to go through and do the sights and then the rest of the details up here and the hammer. I'll just take care of that in other videos. All right, so we're looking good here.